There we go. Wonderful. Um, so yes, we are recording today's session on VS Code uh, uh, for Perlmutter. Uh, thank you all for joining. This is the last event this month for the Grads at Nurse series. Um, so a couple uh, things I wanna go over beforehand. For the record, my name is Libby Gupta. You've probably gotten emails from me. Um, I'm the one who's been organizing a lot of these events. So uh, you're always welcome to reach out to me if you have questions, comments, concerns. Um, a, a few things before we start. So as I mentioned, the event is being recorded. If um, you know we, we are planning on having an interactive session, you're welcome to ask questions. If for any reason you do not wanna be heard or seen in the recording, please feel free to type your questions in the chat. Um, today we don't have a Q&A doc. Um, I really want to just have questions in chat or, you know, if you want to even raise your hand um, and ask a question, it's meant to be a pretty interactive session. As I've just said, you know, we, we're, we're open to questions and I know Nick will be happy to, um, you know, be troubleshooting. The idea is that hopefully by the end of this session, you will have VS Code up and running. Um, so it's meant to be kind of like a demo. But as always, uh, please remember to be respectful and courteous to the other participants. Um, make sure that if you ask a question, you mute yourself afterwards so that someone else can ask a question or, um, you know, there's th there isn't background noise. Um, and just as a reminder, NERSC actually does have a code of conduct. So we we love having activities like this where people can be to come together and talk to each other, but it's always really important that we are treating each other with respect. Um, and so if you have any questions or concerns, please go ahead and check out our, our code of conduct. And as always, you can email me or the other community managers at any point if you have any uh, issues. Um, so just wanna uh, raise those um, points right now, right before. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link in chat, which is kind of a very, very long and ugly link, um, but it, that's uh, to our feedback form. So I'm going to kind of spam that in chat every once in a while. Uh, what I'd really like everyone to do is click on that link and have that tab open so that as soon as today's session ends, the first thing you see is this survey and you take one or two minutes to fill it out. It's extremely brief but it really helps us know what kinds of events we can offer in the future that are gonna be the most helpful to our users. Um, we, we really use this feedback. So please click on this link and um, have it ready right after this session. Just go in there. It should take one to two minutes tops. Um, <clears throat> thank you so much. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna stop sharing and I'll let Nick take over. Uh, I'm gonna probably have to give you. Permission. Yeah, you're gonna have to give give Nick uh in Nursk the the permissions. Okay, sounds good. Actually, I, okay, so you you should be able to now. Cool, I can see it. Yep. Oh. Uh. Sorry, I'm probably gonna have to restart this. And one thing I'll do is if if I see people unmuting, um, unless you have your hand raised, um, I'm going to just keep people muted. We just have had in the past a lot of issues where people <laughs> unmute and then there's like some side conversation going on and it, it can really throw off the session. So if you have a question, totally fine. Just indicate that by raising your hand um, so that we know that you you mean to unmute yourself because <laughs> otherwise it can it can cause problems. Um Okay. And, yeah, just, just to say there is no Q&A doc. So if you have questions, you're welcome to type them in the chat um, or raise your hand and we'll, you know, sort of call on you and unmute you. And so you can ask them um, directly. Yeah, great. So I think everyone can see my screen. Yes, um, so I put in the chat right now. So this is the document um, of how to, how to use VS Code on our docs page. Um, and so I'm basically going to be going through um, this uh, documentation and showing you kind of live in person what it would look like to actually go and set up all of this stuff in VS Code. Um, so I do, I basically don't have anything installed on this computer. I have VS Code installed. Um, I have a terminal installed. Um, and that's about it. So um, 
Nick, right before you get started, I would say if you're able to make your terminal bigger, if you're going to be typing commands and stuff in it, and yeah. if anything you're going to do, just try to make it bigger. Because even on my fairly large screen, the text ends up being kind of small. So, yeah, I'm really only going to run one command in this one, but I'll I'll show you. So okay. Okay. the you. first <laughs> the first thing that um that you're going to need to do is if you don't already have some um, configurations in your SSH config file, it's usually good to have. Um, there's a few configs that I, I put in here in this doc um, to help out with, uh, you know, connecting to NERSC uh, in general, um, but it's really helpful, especially with Visual Studio Code to be able to connect. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just go and edit my SSH config file in VS Code. Um, so there's a way to go in, in VS Code to have this uh, code command. Um, that code command will automatically open up whatever file that you uh, ask it to with VS Code. Um, and so you can see I've now opened up this SSH config file on my uh, laptop um, in uh, in there. So I have right now everything commented out. Um, for now, I'm just going to uncomment this section here. Um, and what this section is basically saying is anytime I have anything that looks like uh, dtn.nurse.gov, perlmutter.nurse.gov, or honestly anything that's at nurse.gov, then I'm going to want to use uh, this specific SSH key file. So I got that key by running the uh, SSH proxy command. Um, probably, you know, if you're used to already uh, SSHing in, then you probably already have been using this command to get this uh, SSH key. Um, uh, I put a couple different things here, which will uh, take that SSH key and store it. Uh, in a way so that you can easily jump around between uh, different computers once you actually have it. Um, and then I also just put my NERSC username here. And so that should let me be able to go and uh, then SSH into uh, Perlmutter. So I should just very easily from the command line now be able to SSH Perlmutter. And now I can get in. But really what we want to do, right, is we want to be able to SSH with uh, Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to open up a new window. And over here in the bottom left-hand corner is the open a remote uh, session. Um, and so I want to open up a remote SSH session. Um, and uh, I got to get the zoom out of the way. Um, in here, I should be able to just type perlmutter.nursc.gov. And as you go. what was that, Brad? What questions as you go? Uh, sure. We had one about, are you going to cover this for Windows as well? I, my understanding is it's very similar for Windows. Yeah, it's very similar, um, especially now Windows has the uh, Windows subsystem for Linux and it has SSH installed uh, by default. Um, and so I'm not sure about getting the SSH keys for um, uh, on Windows. That would be maybe something to look into. But uh, because Windows now has SSH installed, um, then you should be able to do that. Actually, why did I do that? I'll show you. So if you didn't, if you can't use the SSH key, uh, let's go open up another window. Um, so I'll show you here. Uh, let me go back. Sorry, I'm going to move around too many windows. So if I didn't have this in my config and I wasn't going to use my SSH key, um, It will actually uh, oh, I guess because it's not in the config. Um, uh, here, let's take the identity file out. Post. Uh, and so this will actually ask you, um, so if you don't have that identity file, if you haven't gotten your SSH key, 
um, it will actually ask you for your password and one-time password. Um, so if you don't want to get that SSH key or if you're on Windows and it's hard to get that SSH key, you can actually still log on, um, set up that SSH config file and uh, just leave out that identity um, and you'll you'll be able to still do the same thing. So I'm going to quit out of that one. And I'll go back to the one that was on. Sorry, so you just comment, commented uh, the identity file, right? Yeah, so I uncommented, I commented out the identity file. So then instead of trying to use the identity file, it would ask me for my password, one time password. Um, and so that okay, will, sure. and it, and, and it ought to, a VS Code is smart enough to realize that and gives you that prompt. Okay, thanks. Um, so yeah, but so this one is uh, already logged on. I already have this SSH in. Um, you can hit the control and tilde key um, to be able to open up a terminal. Uh, there's also other ways to open up terminals in here. Uh, maybe uh, the bottom one um, will open up the bottom portion. Um, so you should be able to open up terminals and things like that. So here I'm on Perlmutter. Um, I can go and from here, open up files on the file system. So this is just my, it starts off in global homes. Uh, and I have a folder that I've made already for the work that I want to put in here. Um, is there a question about, um, is there any setup such as adding your SSH key to like your known ID? Uh, does that need to be done before running the SSH? Um, maybe if you look in chat. In is there, question. I'm not sure about this known I think ID. SSH proxy handles that. Yeah, you can you can set that up in SSH proxy or it's the um the add identities puts it in your uh in your keychain essentially. Okay. Yeah. And the um the SSH, like the little snippet of uh how you're setting up your SSH file, is that in the um VS Code documentation? In yep. doc so the what so I did was it, it yeah, it was copy pasted from uh the documentation page that I had I had sent earlier. Okay, good. I'll repost the link to that. Thank you. Great. Keep... Thanks. Yep. Um so now I'm here in uh, VS Code. I'm in my VS Code tutorial folder, um, and we can just add a file. Uh, VS Code is really nice because it uh, kind of automatically does a lot of the things for you. Um, so I'm going to put my, uh, I want to make an, a notebook. So I'll do uh, my notebook, And you can see right now, so uh, Visual Studio Code realized that I have something that wants Python. Um, and Microsoft said, hey, it looks like you want to install something that does Python. Would you want to install the Python stuff? So I can just hit accept. Um, and so this is now installing um, parts that VS Code uses to run uh, Python stuff um, on Perlmutter. So it, it installs in your home directory um, in a VS Code folder. And there uh, is a question, Simon, do you want to unmute yourself and ask your question? Yes. Uh, so I had one question about uh, when I saw you connect, you didn't have to authenticate when you recharged uh, Windows, uh, the window, sorry. Um, and that's something I want to understand because I have two problems with that. The first one is that uh, I don't have the prompt uh, when I try to connect. I have to open the terminal to uh, input my password and one-time password. And uh, I every time I reload the window, I have to reconnect. So could you please develop a bit more on that, maybe? Yeah, so that uses um, the SSH proxy command uh, in order to get that. Um, uh, and, and I did put the docs link to that. Let me post that again to more information about SSH proxy. Let me put that again. Yeah, but the, the thing is I work on Windows for now. So it, does it work on Windows? That's yeah, that I'm not sure about that. And unfortunately, I don't have a Windows computer to test. Most of us, I don't think, have Windows computers to okay, test. I'll, I'll, I'll take a look into it. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. is saying in chat that it does work for Windows. It works on Windows using Putty. Okay, good. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll look into that. And uh, about uh, the second one, the, the, my second issue, is, which I, I don't know if you have an answer, maybe you don't, uh, but about the thing that when I try to connect, I don't have the prompt appearing. I have to open a terminal. Uh, to enter the password, and then uh, if I kill that terminal, the SSH connection ends. Yeah, that might, that might be a um, 
a difference between Windows SSH and like a Linux or Mac SSH is it's maybe not connected. No, it's not it's, getting it, that prompt. It's, it's not that because the thing is that I uh, I have other SSH connections and I do have the prompt. It's only NERSC. I don't know why. Hmm. But if, if you don't know, it's no no big deal. It just yeah, it was I, a bit annoying. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, I like like I showed you can I can force it to like I know I could force mine to be able to get the the prompt to show up at the top. Um, oh, you can. Yeah, I I, I showed that uh, by going and and not using my identity file. Uh, it shows a prompt that shows up uh, at the top here. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So back to um. So uh, so what I had done is I had just made myself a, a notebook here in my uh, folder. And I want to put my work in here. Um, so uh, because things are placed in the right place on our file system, so kernels are in places that uh, that VS Code thinks that they should be and things like that, um, you can actually go and look for things like your Python kernel uh, and stuff like that here. Um, so I think I might need to also add, there's a Jupyter extension. Um, so over on the right hand or on the left hand side, um, there are other extensions. And so one of them that I'm also going to add is this Jupyter extension. Um, this is helpful if you're running notebooks and things like that. Um, and now, yeah, now it's working. Um, and you can see, uh, that when I, I don't have a kernel started for my, my Python process yet, um, but if I hit the select kernel here, then I can go and select through different kernels that I have. So that'll search through uh, different Python environments that we have um, or uh, different Jupyter kernels. See, these are custom kernels that I've made for myself um, and all of them show up here, but I'm gonna show that you can use um, just a Python environment. And I'm gonna go, once you set it up the first time, it's a little easier. Uh, and just to double check, these kernels are like on NERSC, right? Yep. So these kernels are running on NERSC. Um, I did this yesterday and it found this automatically. So I don't know why it's not today. Um, but uh, what you can do is you can. Um, set a Python environment. Oh. Maybe it's missing another. Uh, sorry about this, it worked yesterday uh, like I expected. install my own um python environments it's not really um there is an easy way to, to do. So what I'm trying to do, uh, and this worked yesterday, which is why I'm a little confused, um, is it should let you put the entire path to a, uh, to a kernel, uh, and then, um, Jupyter can use that to, or uh, VS Code can use that to run. Uh, let's go see if it maybe is something else that I didn't install. Um, Well, there should be a way to uh, um, 
Yeah, I Let's go see. Um. Actually, this this maybe we can back up for a second. Yeah. There's a a question here. Um. So so far, what we've done is we've. set up the config file and then we've opened like this remote connection to Perlmutter. Yep. So, and there was a couple of people asking questions ah, about okay, right. how do I just like access my like files and like how, because they were basically having to connect um, or like, you know, they're only seeing their like local files. So maybe we can um, look at that a little bit. Cause I think the question sure. is, you know, what, what, like, do we need these extensions or, you know, can we just like, if you have a file and you just want to be able to edit and, and submit a bad job, like, do we need these extensions? Maybe that might be something. Yeah. Else. So, yeah. So I, I figured out what, what I did. So I need, you needed to, I needed to refresh the, uh, up here and then it grabbed all of the Python environments. Um, I was showing this because a lot of people like to use something like, uh, Jupyter, uh, to come into stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and this allows you that if you're, if you're familiar with a notebook environment, um, this gets you onto a notebook. Uh, but yeah, we also have, I mean, so you can do anything um, on here. So let's say that you have uh, your, you know, uh, your C++ file or something like that, um, that you want to do. Again, you can install the automatic extensions. Uh, VS Code is pretty nice about doing this. So this will put like colors and linting and all that kind of stuff nicely for you. Um, so if you have your, uh, you know, in main, uh, return zero. Um, so you can go and you can edit files. Uh, and if you want to go and uh, to get a terminal itself, to be able to then do things like query the batch system or, you know, compile this file or do something else, you can hit the control and tilde key, which will pull up a terminal down here. How did um, you um, open your, um, like the text editor in VS Code from the terminal? Did you do, did you open it from the terminal? So originally I opened up VS Code from uh, my terminal here. So this yeah. is my, this is my local. Right, right, right. Uh, and you can type code. Okay. And that will open up VS Code. Okay. So can you do the same thing in that terminal right there in VS Code as well? Like if you type in code and then... new file.txt or something is that going to open no so because okay. this is a remote server right um so what it's doing is it's it started up a remote server on Perlmutter mm -hmm. uh and then is going to go and uh then you access it from like it's basically sending uh requests back and forth to that through SSH So for example, so, this main.cpp that you've written is it going to be on your local system? This isn't. Nope. So this is uh, in my, this is on, uh, in my home directory at VS code, uh, tutorial. So that's that main.cpp is the same main.cpp. Okay. So this is on Perlmutter. I see. Okay. Yeah. So this is on Perlmutter. Um, okay. when you do start up here, I'll start up a new, uh, connect to host. Uh, so when you first start up a host. Uh, it will actually ask you what you want to do. Um, so it's connected to, to Perlmutter right now, uh, but it doesn't have anything, um, like I'm not in a directory or anything at the moment. Right. 
So this is where you would say open. Okay. And then you can find anywhere on your file system where you want to go. So this can go anywhere. It has access to everything. So you can do things like go to your scratch directories as well. Um, okay. Wherever your code happens to, to lie, you mm -hmm. can go and use this. Once you start up the, the interpreter or start up VS Code, then you can navigate to wherever you want to go to. And then once you're in that directory, uh, the window will stay in that directory as the as the base um, for everything. Oh, I see. So you can't move out of there or you'd have to get a new. Yeah, if you wanted to, if you wanted to move out of here, you'd have to go do something new. You can also kind of uh, once you're in the directory that your your code's actually in, you can do uh, like add files, add folders, things like that. So I can do uh, my data dir, and that will create a directory. So now with the the buttons up here, I was able to create a directory there. And if I put something in there, um, let's touch. um you can see that there's uh, like a new text file in there that okay. I just created. But you, so, you, so basically you can't like, you know, CD dot dot and go all the way back to home or something like that, right? Yeah, okay. I mean, so you can in the terminal itself. The terminal is just a terminal. It can move around right. wherever you want to. But right. this this window is kind of stuck in the base that you've uh, started in. Okay. Um, I have right. a, a quick, quick note on that. Um, there is a way if you use, um, I'm not sure how you do it on Mac, but there's a uh, workspace, uh, VS code has workspaces. So you can, you can create a workspace where you basically say the Explorer, um, tab has, has specific directories that, um, you always see. So if you, if you want, like I have a specific one for my home one for my scratch and i always see those on the explorer side so that's that's a way to always have important ones that you're looking at to on the explorer page okay right. yeah okay. i i'm not familiar with that but yeah that'd be that'd be good to know is that an extension did you say no that should be a default setting uh at least on windows i i see it in file oh. and uh there's add folder to workspace yeah. or say workspace as I could just chime in. Yeah, if you yeah. just put the top of the pull down and you go add folder to workspace, and then you can navigate to any point within the nurse file system. So file add folder to workspace. Yeah. Down, down. Uh, add folder to workspace. Yeah. And then now you can oh, navigate I see. up to whatever you want. When you click it, then it will pin it on the side in the Explorer. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thanks, and then And then, yeah, whenever you log into uh, sure. to, um, NERSC, when you when the viz code window pops up, you can open workspace and then it'll open your predefined uh, files so you have them there. Okay. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I usually just set it up so that I go to uh, whatever directory I want at that one time. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, are there any other questions at the moment? Uh, I see Vankatesh has their hand up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so in this case, if I SSH through the terminal to Perlmutter, uh, when I look at the files, I still see my local files. So is there some other process that I've missed right at the start? Uh, so you've connected over here. It says uh, Perlmutter. So you need to you know you'll need to do the remote SSH portion, which is uh, over here. It should just be a, a blue. Uh, well, the default is the blue one, um, this blue icon, uh, and then you would connect to a host, uh, which would then, then you can set up to, to connect to Perlmutter. So that's the first step in getting, getting onto Perlmutter. And then you'll see things will change, right? So here it says SSH Perlmutter, which means I'm connected through SSH to Perlmutter. Same thing up here. It's SSH Perlmutter that I'm connected, um, to Perlmutter with the SSH connection. Uh, yeah, but thanks for, thanks for questions in, in the comments, everyone. Um, Nick, do you know if you can, can, uh, do a container connect from VS code to a container that's running on? Uh, um, I, I yeah. have, yeah. So I know that VS code has the remote containers option. 
Um, I have not tested that uh, if it works with SSH and a remote container. Um, the thing I would think that you would actually have to do is uh, do an SSH trick that um, you can run remote commands in SSH. And so in theory, you could go and run Podman HPC, the container that you want to run, uh, and then like bash. And so VS Code would be tricked into SSHing directly into a container. Um, and then from there, it would try to start the server. Um, I have not tried that, though. So I do not guarantee that it would work. And there's probably a lot more options than just the uh, run container um, that you'd need to to work out. Okay, I have a question for the audience before we move on. I know Nick has other things um, to show us, but uh, with a show of hands, are people who maybe haven't previously used VS Code on Perlmutter, have you been able to do the remote connection? So setting up your um, VS Code config and then using the button on in the corner. Okay, I'm seeing lots of raised hands and thumbs up. Good, okay, great. Are there any questions or pe are people stuck? Are they confused about that process so far? And now, now I don't know if people are raising their hand because they have a question or if they were saying, uh, Raul, and um, there's another person. Do, oh. do, do you have a question? No. Okay, you don't have a question. Okay. Um, okay, good. I just want to make sure people are able, at least able to do that. Uh, okay, I see, I see, I think, a question. Kostub, would you like to um, unmute and ask your question? The sorry, I couldn't hear that. I'm sorry, I can't hear that either. Oh, uh, I I see your question in the in the chat. I think we'll I can get back to that later on that because I that is untested, so I don't want to. I don't think we're gonna show that. It's about running the container, okay. uh, running it in the container. Um, so that's untested. I have not tried it. Um, yes, I know Doc VS Code has Docker extensions, but we don't have Docker on Perlmutter, so I don't think that it works out of the box. <clears throat> um, okay, I see. So one question in, in chat is, yeah, you, so if, you, if you're not using SSH proxy, which gives you your one-time password for like 24 hours, basically, um, you, do, you would have to enter it every single time. Right, so, yeah. so SSH proxy is the only thing that lets you sort of bypass MFA but only for 24 hours, it's not a forever thing. So a lot of times people will just use SSH proxy every morning when they're getting ready to work, then that gives them the rest of the day, they can be doing whatever, but then the next day when you sign in, you have to do it again. Um, Venkatesh, do you still have a question? Oh, sorry, Nick, did you wanna add? I was just off? saying, I, I see a lot of people in the chat asking about it on a compute node, and that was what I was gonna actually do next. So I'll show you the steps to go and get this running on a compute node instead of a login node. So okay. this would be be basically, you know, a lot of people want to use this for um, like Jupyter Notebooks. Maybe you have some kind of um, uh, like training or something like that that you want to do. Um, and you have a Jupyter Notebook that's already running. Um, what you So the way that you can do this is first you'll have to go get a node kind of manually. Um, so I did that already. Uh, um, so, uh, I did a little bit of movie magic. Oh, shoot. You lost it. Died. it. No. I lost it. <laughs> it auto logs you out if you don't use stuff for a couple minutes, but okay. So what I did is I just was on, uh, I have my terminal open. I allocated a node for myself for an hour, uh, on a GPU node. And so... Uh, there's a couple things you have to do. One, again, is we have to go edit our SSH config again. Um, this time, so I'm back to my window that I have with my SSH config. And that's where the second uh, part comes in. So this one down here, 
um, this part of the SSH config will get me to a uh, a node. So what it's doing is it this is basically a wildcard that says anything that starts with NID and then a whole bunch of uh, numbers. Um, that's going to be something that is a which is what our login nodes look like. Uh, then then use this configuration. Um, I'll put my uh, username down here. And what it's going to do is it's actually going to do a proxy jump, which just means that it's going to go to a login node before going to the uh, compute node. So it'll it'll go through a login node first. Um, one other thing that I do here is I use this, which is a uh, the control masters. So this allows so that um, once you've established the connection once, then you can reuse that same connection in case you open up new uh, terminals or anything with it. And so the first thing I have to do is if you haven't made this directory already, uh, is to make that directory. And this directory is on your uh, local computer. Okay, so I've made that directory. And now I'm going to go to, I have too many windows open. So here's just a blank one that I have. Um, and in the same way that I did with uh, um, going to Perlmutter, I'm going to open up um, and connect our current one to uh, the node that I got. So I'm on uh, 51 or 1501. And so all I do is I just paste that into here of what I what node I want to connect to. And it should go and open on the compute node. So now if I open up my terminal here, you can see now instead of being on a login node, I'm on this compute node on here. Um, and you have the same access to the same uh, VS code, everything like that. Um, I'm going to open uh, my uh, tutorial folder again. Uh, yes, I trust the author. Um, and now again, uh, you know, if you have your notebook that has your uh, machine learning training or something like that in it, now this is because you're SSH'd into uh, one of the compute nodes, you're now on that node. So I can show here. Uh, so I... Uh, just detected kernels. Just took a second. Uh, so yeah, so if it doesn't detect your kernels right away, you can uh, refresh that. Um, and I'm just going to use... Uh, you know, if you don't see all the kernels there, you can refresh. And so I'm just going to use the basic NERSC Python one for this, um, which has a lot of things uh, already installed in it. Um, and I can show you. Should. There we go. Um, so I have, uh, I'm on a, compute node with four GPUs um, and running commands, I can see that I have all four of those uh, GPUs available to me. Um, and so you could do anything kind of on here. If I if I had selected a notebook with um, some machine learning uh, models uh, or some like PyTorch or something like that, um, this should all work with PyTorch or whatever you want to use here. Um, this also works if you want to do like interactive programming or something like that, and what? you want to have those GPUs for it, you, you could um... be in here. Uh, yeah, well, programming. I was just joined a seminar that I forgot about. Uh, do we want to? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Go beneath. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, question, Joel. Yeah. 
Hey, thanks. Yeah, hey. I just wanted to confirm from what we just went over then that we would want to log into Perlmutter on uh, the terminal separately in order to get our node number and then input it into VS Code. Yeah, that's that's kind of the way to do it. Um, you could do that in you could do that in your original VS Code window. So I could have done it from uh, this one here. This has a terminal here, so I could have done my saloc command here, gotten the node information. But yes, then you need to go open up a second uh, VS Code to connect directly into that uh, node that you want to have. And then just to clarify. You, yeah, sorry, go ahead. And I'll ask your question. Sorry, just in, so then as a follow up, um, where we would normally put um, like perlmutter.nurse.gov, that's where we would put the node number instead. Yeah, yeah. So instead of perlmutter.nurse.gov, you put that node number. And because in that SSH config, um, as long as you're using uh the SSH config, um, this will this knows that it needs to go through um a regular login node before it can get to the node that we're gonna be running on. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. And I have a follow-up question. Yeah. Okay, so if you did is like so you got your node number mm -hmm. uh so for, to, for the node number you definitely need to have your ssh config set up there's no way to do it just using vs code um again i think you should be able to uh i think it will also do without if you get rid of these portions um then it should ask you for your username and password uh i'm not sure what it's gonna do i'm gonna have to uh uh let's try that okay so i've just commented out a few things I'm going to go here, uh, connect the current window, I'll get my node number again. Yeah, unfortunately, because I'm already connected, it, it uh, just redid that connection. But I believe that it should do like we did the previous time it um, host. Salt nurse uh, it should ask you for your um, password and one-time password um, in this top bar here. And so that should allow you to, instead of having to have uh, the SSH key automatically there. All right, thank you. Yeah. One thing, if you um, have a moment, can you show us again how to have like your scratch directory open in the explorer on the side um like you know once you're on your compute or whatever yeah so uh let's go over to this is the one on the compute node um so we should be able to go and up at the top it's i can't make this any bigger um but there is uh this file portion and so we can do something like add a folder to workspace and so here I'll do uh, slash p scratch slash sd. Oh, can't type. Uh, and then I can go to my scratch directory. Uh, let's go into work. Hit OK. And then uh, that should have put it. Um, Sometimes when you add a new directory, you need to refresh or reload the window. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Yeah, you need to re, re log in opening the workspace. And because I uncommented all the things, it's not working. How do you refresh VS Code? Is there like a 
is there a shortcut or how, what are you doing to tell it to refresh? It just, it just waited a second and then it popped up with a thing that was like, you need to refresh. Oh, I see. So he you, told you. You can also um, hit command the, shift P. Command shift P. Okay. And that opens and then, up. And then type re or start typing reload, I think, or re yeah, uh, re reload window. Oh, nice. Okay. They don't have a refresh button somewhere. Um, so there was also a question um, about the forward agent. Um, is that basically for like X11 forwarding? Um, or is or are those things not re really related? No, the uh, so your SSH agent is the is a way to store keys and then it stores keys uh, in memory and then it can actually pass that like storage of your keys along with you as you SSH around. Um, so this can be helpful if you're, you know, because I'm jumping through the login node to try and get to a compute node, um, it can be kind of helpful because it, what it does, is it'll store my SSH key from that, that I got from SSH proxy. Um, and then, then I can use it again, other places. And I don't have to, to have that key in all different places. So, so maybe a check-in real fast um, for people who are following along. Was were people able to get a compute node um, and use VS Code to connect to that compute node? Now, the the rate determining step there might be the ability to get a compute node. <laughs> yeah. um, but ideally, if you even if you uh, and ask for an interactive, you know, shared node for like, you know, ten minutes, ideally you can get one and then. Um, try that have it has anyone been able to do that on their end and remember the 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 information that um nick added to his like uh ssh um config is in the vs code documentation so you can just copy and paste it from there the only thing that you have to add is that directory um yeah. right nick you have to make a directory on your local system yeah it just a uh, it just that's just a place to put that um so it does a the to do SSH multiplexing. Um, it just needs a place to put that socket. So and that's just a place to put that. Okay, sounds good. So have has anyone been able to do that? I don't see any hands. I'm worried that people are having trouble with this. Um, Theo, did you have a question? I see you unmuted. Okay, maybe not. No, sorry. Thank you. No, no, that's okay. If you have a question, you're welcome to ask it. Um, is are people having trouble with this? Are people not trying it? That's okay. Sometimes. Trying to get a compute node is uh, <laughs> is the the part that's difficult. Yeah, go for it, John. Uh, yeah, for the for the identity file. I'm sorry, going back to that. Um, is that just like anywhere on our local machine, like a different directory that we're adding instead of the .fsh slash nurse or? No, so that yeah, so that uh directory should be uh. It can be anywhere. I usually put it in this SSH uh, CM directory. Um, CM stands for Control Master, which is the the thing that it's actually using um, to to do this multiplexing. Um, that's a choice that I made, and it's in the docs now. I guess we could change. You can change that if you really wanted to. Um, it's just something that I have uh, in that config. Um, so that's just saying. This control path is just the place that it puts that um, and just putting that in that directory. I see. Okay. Looks like and this works. and this file, yeah, and this file itself is in that directory as well. It's in that dot SSH config uh, is is where this file is. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so we are just under 10 minutes left. Um, Nick, did you have some other things you wanted to show or talk about? No, I think the biggest thing was getting to the uh, to the point of showing how to get it onto the compute nodes. And so, yeah, if there's any other questions or anything, let me know. Sounds good. Um, yes, I see a question. Go ahead, ask your question, Vernon. Hi there. Um, so I was messing around with this earlier this week and I managed to get connected to a compute node, but uh, I would then go to work in like a Jupyter notebook and get logged out of the compute node for an activity later on, even though <laughs> I was like actively working in the Jupyter notebook. And I was wondering if there's a remedy for that. 
Yeah, I know that could be this this uh inactive thing. Um, yeah, that's what it the is. so you can do sleep <laughs> infinity. <laughs> Uh, I spelled it wrong and just put, put a big number um, and that should, that should hold it. Um, okay. There might be, uh, I can update the docs with it. I, I've had thoughts of putting in a way, like basically a, a job command that would essentially do this. Um, so then you could easily just submit a job to be able then uh, basically just print out the uh, node name to a file or something so that it's easy to, um, uh, like submit a job, have it just kind of sit there and wait for you to connect with uh, VS Code. So, Got it. Um, but yeah, sleeping for a long time should do it. Okay, thank you. Oops, sorry, I was muted. <laughs> uh, so Julian has a question. You're welcome okay. to unmute. And then right after that, we have... Um... Jolin, and I'm really sorry if I'm saying people's names wrong. Please feel free to correct me. Yeah, can you go back to the config file, please? Um, yeah. Uh, all right. So the identity file should point to where I store my key, right? Is, is that is that the okay? Right. I still, I still I still cannot do that on 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 Windows for some reason, and I'm I'm just. I'm really confused on. Uh, I I don't want to to log into a compute node. I, uh, just a login node would be fine, but I, I I cannot even make that. So I'm just wondering how how to. Uh, so um, that yeah that that's the default location if you use uh the SSH proxy command. Um. So that is at. Uh. Uh. Someone know where it is? Uh, CFS Cedars. Yeah, we, we've been putting a few um, of these links into chat. Um, I can keep adding. Yeah, I just, uh, that's not the right one. A. Use it. Uh, it's an MFA. Okay. Yeah, so this is the command, the SSH proxy command. Um, uh, that you can use to, uh, it'll ask for your password, a one time password, and this puts that key automatically in that dot uh, SSH uh, folder as slash NERSC. And I put the link to the um, docs page, to this. That, that basically that docs page in the yeah. chat here. So you can go and copy it from, copy the things from there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, uh, jo Jolin. Sorry. Yo, it's Yolan. Yolan. Um, my bad, sorry. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask if we did want to try to use the solid command to request a node for a certain number of minutes if we don't run a job while we've requested it, does do those minutes still disappear from like our total allocation that our PI has? Yeah. So whenever you are on a compute node that will be using hours, no matter what you're doing on that, because we don't, we're not monitoring for whether uh, you have activity on there. We're monitoring for whether you, you have a lease for that. So you're basically leasing it away from us for a, for a while. And so whatever you do with that, that's uh, the hours that get charged to you um, for that. So, so yeah, so be cautious if you do want to go and connect your to um, this to a compute node uh, that 
you will be being charged hours when you're on that compute node. Um, so that's why we usually connect to the login nodes for doing a lot of our code, um, you know, making sure that everything works for the actual coding portion. And then for actually running your code is when you want to get on the compute node. Oh, I see. Okay, awesome. And then I guess a follow up from that would be if we have all of our, like if we've been doing just computing on our local machine, but now it's not enough and we want to use a, a node on Perlmutter, how would we transfer our, our files from like a local VS code file to a, on the, like within Perlmutter login file system? So uh, the file systems are the same across compute and login nodes. And so um, once you get onto the login node, you can go uh, disconnect from here. Um, but I can connect back to that node again. Uh, and so let's connect to, I'll connect to my login node again, or back to my uh, compute node. Um, and then from here, I can then open um, any files that I have. So I'm on the compute node. So I'm on this node uh, 1501 um, and I have access to the same file systems and everything. So you would just go find wherever your code is here. I think the question is how do you, what's the best way to get files from your local system oh. to a NERSC system? Is that, is that right? Is that the question? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Do I do I have to contract contractually say Globus? Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say. Um. I I wonder. So. Yeah. I I the funny thing is that whenever I've done this, um. I actually don't think I've ever moved files from my local system to Perlmutter. I find myself doing it the other way, and it's really easy to SCP off of Perlmutter, but I don't actually know what the best way is to put local files onto Perlmutter. <laughs> um, I actually find it way easier to SCP stuff to Perlmutter than to get it off, but maybe okay. that's... So, so do, how do you, how do you, uh, how do you tell it? Like, I guess I don't know what my local computer is, like, do you have to use your IP address to tell it, like, go find this computer and... Oh, no, because you can use uh, you can use SCP from Perlmutter mm -hmm. to your local, or you can use it from your local to Perlmutter. Mm -hmm. So usually so, I just do it like from my local command line. Mm -hmm. I just have to know like what the names of the files are on Perlmutter. Oh, right, right. Okay, I understand. Okay. So yeah. I just tested. Um, so I have, here, I'll delete it here. Uh, delete permanently, delete. Um, so here is my VS Code session. Um, I do not have a file called test.py in there. Uh, I'll open this here. So this is my local file system. It's on my desktop. I have this test.py file. I can show you it and I'll just pull it uh, over here into there and it just uploaded it. So if you have small files, you should be able to drag and drop them into this sidebar here, and that will upload them uh, pretty quickly to. Um, oh, you can drag and drop files. You can, That's yep. <laughs> That's amazing. I did, so I did just put in. I I googled just sort of like how do you use the SCP command to transfer files. So this is something that's not specific to NERSC. You can use SCP. Um, and if you need help with the syntax, uh, I just put something from Google in there. Um, but it sounds like, I mean, drag and drop is amazing. Then you can just yeah. drop from your, your finder window, right? Into, into Perlmutter. Right. Or something. So you can, you can yeah. drag from your finder window into Perlmutter um, through the side. And because this is using SSH, it's basically the same thing that SCP would do for you. Um, but it's just using SSH to be able to transfer those files. in. so it should be just as fast as SCP. Nice. Okay. Amazing. And yeah. I, sorry, just one more random question. Do people store like big data? Do you put like huge data sets into this home file in order to do computations on them? Is that no. So that would be where you would go onto um, Scratch, your Scratch file system. Um, is It's kind of the same. It should be P Scratch, you, the first letter of your username, then your username. This is where you would put your uh, large data. Um, 
Uh, it's called show quota, I think. Oh, yeah. you can't do it from a, a compute node. You have to be on. Oh, is it, that's why I'm you have to be on a login yeah, node. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, your your quota for your home uh, uh, location is about forty gigabytes. So you don't have a lot of room there. So if you have big big data, first of all, if you may not be able to drag and drop it if it's really big. I think that might be a problem. You know, if you're if you're trying to transfer terabytes of data, I think you would have to actually use something else. I'm not sure. Yeah. That's when I would um, use Globus to transfer things well, in. But if it's if it's really big, um, but then you also want to make sure you put it directly into Scratch because your home directory will not have room for it. Your home directory only has 40 gigabytes. Um, gotcha. Thank you guys so much. I yeah. appreciate it. Of yeah, course. definitely. So we are at an hour, um, but I, I mean, I'm still available to finish answering some questions. I think Nick doesn't mind. Do yeah, I'll be good for a while. Yes, yeah, for staying for a few minutes. So if you need to go, no worries. Um, please make sure you fill out our um, feedback form. I am going to stop the recording. So if you'd like to, um, you know, keep asking questions, they won't be part of the recording. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now.